What is going on, people? Welcome to another edition of Hustlers Kung Fu Live. Today, we're going to be embarking on some sales training. Yes, sales training. Today, I'm going to teach you how to sell big ticket items. Yep, yep. That's what we're getting ready to do. Make sure we got everything where we need it. Make sure we're looking good because I'm your hustling godfather. I'm the guy that puts up videos to teach you how to make $1,000 per month for free. And before you ask what video is that is, how to start a service business. Use your best friend, Google. It's easy to find if you Google it. All right, we've got the $10,000 challenge for this month and you know, 10,000 bucks in 25 days. Uh, we're not counting the days since the day's already gone. So we got 22 to go, 20 more days to go. But today we're gonna talk about learning how to sell big ticket. You know who did this, right? Someone you all love, Elon uh, Musk. He created Tesla in its former version to fund this version because he knew that to sell small ticket, these cars that most people could afford, he wasn't gonna have the money. So he created a very high end product that only a few people could get. But when you're selling to that crowd, uh, people who make 100, 150,000 and above, they usually weather bad storms pretty well, depending upon who they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into some uh, stuff. I'm going to give you some resources. All right. I want you guys to go ahead and grab this book. How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins. Go ahead and grab that. Also, I want you to get this book. Pitch Anything, an innovative method for presenting, persuading, and winning the deal. And since I'm giving you some resources, I really want to see some super chat. Uh, I really want to see some super chat action. I want to see some liking action. Because if I don't see any super chat action, and I don't see any liking action, I ain't going to do these anymore. So, you've been warned. Now, for those of you who need more help, I want you to go below. And you can use your 50% off coupon to get the Hustlers LLC, which is what I believe every man needs, or 30 days to 2500 or the Never Broke Action Pack. Those are the only things for sale. The Hustlers LLC and the Never Broke Action Pack will automatically get you into disruptive mail prep. So with that, let us begin. Let us start making some money. Let us start doing this thing. Okay. So what's the first thing that you need to do? Any hands, anybody in the chat, what is the first thing you need to do to make money? Anyone. I want answers. I'm that teacher. I'm that DI. I'm all up in your ass. Okay. Well, the first thing is, who is your target audience? It sounds familiar, right? You write up your dream girl. You know exactly what you're looking for. You know how big she is, hair color, eye color. You know, you got all this stuff written down. This is the same thing that you should do with your target. Who's your target? Who are you selling to? Who do you want to sell to? Where do they live? Where do they hang out? What periodicals do they read? What's their consumer shopping habits? You need to know all of that if you want to sell big ticket. I sold big ticket. Now, here was how my deal worked. We got 50% of the net. So if we did a $150,000 deal and if we sold it at full boat, that was going to be 75 Let's say 50 something to 70. You know, if it was perfect, it would be like a $75,000 profit. But usually there's things that happen. So it would usually be around 50 to 65. So I would get half or 50 or half of 65. 50% of the net. That was high end selling. Now, 
part of the problem that many of you face is you've never gone through a professional selling program. So you don't really know where to start. You just know, I want to make some money. I want to make some money. But you don't even know how to set up your sales process. Your sales process is different than your sales funnel. Let me say that again. Your sales process is way different than your sales funnel. A sales funnel is a way to capture leads and work them through till you get to the sales process. This is the way I used to do it. I would only call people that I knew were doing something. I had evolved to that level. I wouldn't just call any and everyone. And I would press a meeting as fast as possible. If I got that person on the phone, I would try to meet them that day. And I would like, I will rearrange my day for you. Well, I'm busy until five. I can see you at 530. I was relentless. I was fucking relentless because the thing is, these small windows of opportunity, right? You may never get them on the phone again. So I would like, well, what about this time? What about this time? And one lady, she even said, you, you're pretty desperate. I said, you're damn right. I'm desperate for your business. Anyone else working this hard for you? She said, not really. I'll meet you at 2.30. Oh, yeah. I was not conventional. So once you get them on the phone, try to set up the meeting that day. If you have to rearrange your schedule, if you have to, you know, meet them at 7 p.m. for dinner. Try to get that meeting as soon as possible. And this is why. You think you're the only one calling them? This seems very similar to dating. You're dating online. You chat her up. There's all kind of Jody's all up in her inbox. All these little dicks poking up. Poke, poke, poke. I want that pussy. I want that pussy. So you lay back in the cut. Then a better Jody with a better pitch comes in. She ain't calling you back no more. She already been fucked. She liked Jody's dick. It fits the pussy. So she's 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 gone. Same thing happens with these leads. <laughs> the same thing happens with these leads. They disappear so quick. They are crazy. Leads, and one of my friends said, leads are like ice cream. You better get them while they're cold and warm them up in your mouth. All right. Appreciate you folks. Cody Wyman with the super chat. Appreciate you. Jay Preston, thank you for the super chat. We need more. This is some real good training here. As we used to say in the military, when the conditions were all jacked up, good training. All right, so now let's back it up a little bit. How many of you know how to set an appointment on the phone? Because this is how you set an appointment. And I'm running parallel here because setting the appointment is the same thing as getting the girl's number. You got to do that quick. No chit chat. No how's the weather. None of that. It's like, hey, I want to sell you some furniture. Hey, I think you're cute. I want to take you out sometime. What is your number? That took, what, eight seconds? Don't hang around. Don't keep talking. You mess up the mystery. You really do. So let's see. Um, Christian Amerson, do you think texting potential leads is a good idea? I'm asking because I use lead pages and thumbtacks in order to grab businesses. No. Texting is very informal. If you're selling to millennials, that may fly. But for the people with the money, the people with the ducats, if they're over 40, they're over 50, hell no. Don't text them. All right, Kevin, coming with that cold hard facts. Thanks, uh, thanks for being the mod, this dude bakes. So now, once you get into the presentation, no small talk. I was never one for small talk. You, you want to pin your ears back, and you want to sneak in there like a tiger or a lion, and you want to kill something. You want to kill. And you just come in there like, hey, I understand your time is busy. Let's get to it. If they're a really busy person, they're going to appreciate that. Uh, in the South, you can run into some problems with that because people kind of like to percolate 
I used to hate that shit. But get down to it and ask this question. Are you the person making all of the decisions on this project? If you're not, who else should I talk to? This is called qualifying the lead. Now, trying to qualify people on the phone and set the appointment could be a little tricky. I would rather waste a tank of get, you know, some gas and go meet them and get in and get that first impression. Also, your energy needs to be high. Your energy needs to be very, very high. You need to be super positive. You need to have a firm handshake. You can't go in there with this limp, limp wrist bullshit, even if it's a woman. Because a lot of these women who are professionals, they're going to squeeze your hand very hard. Very hard. So you get in there and this question is going to determine how long you stay. Because sometimes they're going to lie. <laughs> they go like, yeah. So you, you keep that in mind because your deal can fall apart because you're talking to the wrong person. So you're just like, okay, take it for the word. Don't get confrontational. Never, ever get confrontational. Then you pitch them and then you qualify them. What are you looking to spend? Right? Now, keep that as a, what I like to call a lever, a, a way to get some leverage in there. Because typically when people were looking for office furniture, they didn't really know the prices. They knew they had a budget. But if you're a good salesman, you can climb out of that trap. Then you, you have a you, you, one of the best things that works really well is, look, give me five minutes of your time. And then once you start pitching and selling, whatever it is. Um, number two, what is the best way to reach these people? I kind of went over that. If you're doing high end sales and you're talking to decision makers, these people usually go in very early and they stay very late. Um, the middle of the day is very hard to set appointments with them. Sometimes you can try, but you might have to get up at five o'clock in the morning and start calling at 530. I am not kidding you. Call them. Don't leave a message. But yeah, call them two or three times in the morning and call them two or three times late in the evening. Also. I'm going to dress for success. Uh, when you get up at five in the morning, do not go and call. What you want to do is you want to shave. You want to put on the work clothes that you're going to be working in. You want you, you put in your cologne on, put your cologne on. You want to be GQ smooth and business ready because when you put on your business clothes, you transform. You ever see somebody in the military who looks like an absolute bum in civilian clothes, but in their uniform, they straight as attack. They GQ smooth. You want to be GQ smooth because that's going to help your mental. So you make these phone calls. And one of the things that really got me to success was not sticking the script. Let's say I had 50 phone calls to make. As soon as I got an appointment, my whole energy changed. My goal was to meet this person as soon as possible and get in front of them. It's very, very important that you get in front of them. Now, let's see. Um, <laughs> let's see what's going on. Ghosting Wild Black, thank you for the $5 super chat. Christian Amison, thank you for the $10. Johnny Walden, thank you for the $12 super chat. Appreciate you too. No slick talk. You want to be straight and you don't ever want to lie. We're going to kind of go around this. Your first hour of the day should be about targets. These are your whales. These are the deals you want. This is the stuff like your dream girl. You should. Now, this is easy. This is really, really easy. You can Facebook virtually anybody. So this is going to let you know who you're talking to. You go to online. Uh, typically, most of the professionals, there's an online directory. Often they have their picture or have their name. You want to go to Facebook and see how old they are so you know how to adjust your pitch. Because once again, if they're late 30s, 40s, 50s, do not text these people. Call them. <laughs> Call them. Call them. If they're like 30 and under, you might be able to get away with a text message. But here's the thing with a text message. A text message is very easy to ignore. A text message is very easy to get rid of. A text message so I would call and actually talk to someone in all cases 
Now, after you've done your research, because we used to have to do Hoover's. There was no Facebook. And I had to actually go to company pages and spend like five, ten minutes reading stuff for the for the targets. But now you do Facebook, you make sure you check their Twitter and you check their Instagram. You check everything because you don't want to say anything to offend. So by checking their Facebook, checking their Twitter, checking their Instagram, you're going to learn a lot about them, which is what I do with the dating. Because you want to know, you want to get as much information as possible because you could literally say one wrong thing and blow the deal 10 seconds into your phone conversation because you didn't do your homework. Uh, let's see. Solence, the text message has no energy or context. Agent J. Poole calls work way better with me. Texting just gives me an ir gets irritating after a while. Plus, if you have a really good voice, if you have the phone voice, well, hello, this is Glendon Cameron. That's the phone voice. That voice, if it was a chick, I had her wet in the panties. She was just like, I just want to meet him just to see what, who matches his voice. Use whatever angle you can to get in. All right. We took over time. Also, number two, what's the best way to reach these people? Now, I'm going to tell you something, and there was this group I was in, and the lady's name was Mary. Mary said most millionaires are not on Facebook. They may have a Facebook profile, but they're not really on Facebook. And I'm going to actually see if I can find this and show you how HubSpot gets clients. Uh, all right. I'm looking for this. All right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm I'm going to I'm going to get this right. HubSpot, which is an internet marketing company, gets his clients from meetups. <laughs> you heard right. HubSpot. Good Lord, my spelling is atrocious. HubSpot. Meetings. HubSpot meetup. Okay. Uh, let's just go here because I can't find the article, but HubSpot, if you didn't know, they are CRM, they're sales management, you know, they get most of their clients through meetups. They find people, they have ambassadors, and this is an internet company, but they get most of their clients to use their service through local meetups around the country. Now, let's look at that. Why do they do that? Because they can't get their clients to people that they want to sell to online. Once again, 80, let's just say 89% of all commerce is still done out here. When you go to selling big ticket, high ticket items to people, you need to actually talk to someone. There's going to be Usually a pre-decision maker, this is the person to vet out leads and to get rid of the time where it's just in the bullshitters. And then there's going to be the decision maker behind that person. Typically, I was always catching up with the front person. Today, you just can't say, look, you know, I ain't going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to the decision maker. The decision maker put this person in the lane. So what you have to do is is sell that person so well that they drop all pretense and they get on the phone and they call the decision maker and bring them in. Now, how do you do this? First of all, you got to know if you're talking to the decision maker or not. So you're sitting in their office, you want to look around and you want to go to the org chart. Every company has an org chart and you want to see their position. And if they're not a senior person, like a, a VP or senior VP, more than likely they're not the final authority of the final say but hey you got in you got in 
So what you have to do is to be so technical and put out such questions that this person feels a little intimidated, but you sound so good they want to bring in their boss because this is the game you got to play. You got to make that pre-decision maker look good. Everyone has an ego. This is how I did one deal. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel that you're the final person that I need to talk to. So let's play this game. What can I do to make you look good to that person? And she was like, no one's ever asked me that question. I'm not the average salesperson. Well, okay. The mask came off. The problem we've been having is we've got this Titan budget and everyone is trying to sell us something that is beyond the budget. All right, and I'm going to tell you why. You want X, Y, and Z and you want new furniture. That's really not going to happen because I'll show you my cost. So I would take a 10% hit on that. No one's going to do that. Oh, let me talk to your boss. We'll be frank and candid, and I won't waste his time. She gets on the phone, do the conference thing, and I say, hey, Andy, um, I hear you got a predicament. I'm going to give you three solutions real quick. You can go used, and that's going to get you within your budget. You can go a mixture of used. That's going to kind of keep you in your budget. New is not going to work, and these are the following reasons. So Andy was like, Wow, no one ever explained this to me. I said, Andy, because no one ever could reach you. <laughs> He's like, true, true, true. Uh, Alice does a good job of fronting people. Well, we just pulled a number out of our ass. He's a Texan. We could go half a million if we had to. I was just trying to save money. But, um, you know, let's just say the budget, this was a $150,000 deal. Instantly, because I knew what I was dealing with, I was able to get to the person who really made decisions and no one wants to tell you, oh, we're asking for 150, but we can really go up to half a million. No one wants to tell you that, but you got to be smart. You got to be crafty. So that's just one of the ways. And I think being, you know, depending on where, like, let's say you're in London, say you're in the UK and you're watching this. You can't do this in London. This only works in America. Just to be clear about that. What the heck? There we go. Uh, let's see. Sure thing. Uh, yes, Louis Vargas, the, the voice is key. What's up, Charlatan? Thanks for being the mod. <laughs> Mentor Shelly. Hey, I'm just giving you the game. Super chat it up. Super chat it up. And also like this video. There's uh, I'm, I'm doing my O'Shea Jackson video. There's 108 of y'all watching this and only 25 have liked it. Everybody should like this video like right now. All right. Wild Jones report. They're too busy making millions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Christian Emerson, I know this may be simple, but how would you open a phone call with a potential client? No, actually, that's a great question. First thing is, after you've done your research and you've kind of like today, I would go on their Facebook page and I would go into their personal pictures just to kind of see what temperament this person has. So and I would look at where they were born. If they were from New York, I would be very to the point, very quick, like, hey, Shelly, this is Glenn and Cameron. I hear you got some needs for some furniture. I want to set an appointment and explain how I can save you money. Boom, boom, boom. If uh, I'm dealing with someone, let's say. John from Tennessee, I may have to slow it down a little bit. Where people are from is typically how they do business. Not always, but typically. So Southerners typically like to chit chat, shoot the shit. Northerners, let's get down to business. New Yorkers, Chicago's from Boston, they like, let's, let's, let's do this, let's do this, do the deal, then go out drinking and get drunk. So I would open it up very direct because once again, these people are really busy, they're pressed for time, they will appreciate your boom, 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 boom. No small talk if you if you can get away from it. Uh, 
Um, texting, I don't know. Anthony Johnson, not going to lie, if it wasn't for the underground hustling sales, I don't know where I would be. It truly made me a better man. Sales, sales, sales. Yes. Sales, is, sales put hair on your chest, man. What's up, Be Real? Thanks for being the mod. Douglas Jones, what's up? Robbie Rob, what's up? Archangel, thanks for being the sub. <laughs> Lieutenant Johnson. Uh, Gabrand, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All right, so once you get into the presentation, uh, some that you should do, you should role play. You should grab one of your friends or your girls, and you should practice your pitch at least ten times before you give it. And also, when you're on your way to the sales appointment, no talk radio that can change your mood. Nothing. You should have. Lead to feel Tommy Hopkins, some motivation Brian, that should always be playing on your radio or classical music. No talk radio, no new. Because see what happened is, let's say you're listening to talk radio and you get in there and you just let out some stuff that you, you heard. And what if this person isn't a conservative? That's going to sour the mood very quick. You don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk about women. You, you don't, maybe sports. That's pretty safe, but you don't want to talk about any polarizing issues. And once again, your energy, it needs to be very, very high. You need to be looking in the eye, all that. Uh, let's see, evening. What about JCH? What about West Coast people? That was always a crapshoot for me. Some of them are just as like, let's get to it. And some of them like, hey, let's go for Cosmos. That was always um, interesting. You know, that's funny. I never really met that many West Coast people in decision-making positions down here. Come to think of it, a lot of Northerners, a lot of Northerners, uh, a few Southerners, not really Cali people. That's an interesting insight. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, Gabran, how do you do market research? Let's talk about market research years ago. There was a site called Hoover's. Uh, today I would do research. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Everybody's going to have at least one of those unless they're really old. And they're going to have a secretary who's going to read their emails to them. They, they don't do email. All right. So... Mark Scott, getting out of trucking and looking to get into sales, rebuilding from scratch financially again at 72, at 42, any thoughts? Uh, let's talk about sales training. The jobs that will give you the best sales training you can't get. And it isn't because you're not smart enough, you're not connected. All, like today, I couldn't have got that job at rent with my with my scheme. You need to know people. This is where networking, going to these uh, business groups will pay off. LinkedIn, because typically the better jobs, and I'm talking about 70000 to 150000 those jobs aren't posted. If they're posted, it's just for window dressing because they already know who they want. Uh, typically, to get into these organizations today, you're going to need someone on the inside who likes you and will refer you in. That's the only way you're going to get these jobs unless they're just mad desperate. So what I would tell you to do, Mark Scott, is to look at your financial situation, get rid of everything that you don't need, and start hustling your face off. And read the books that I presented in the beginning. You know, Watch this again and read the books and begin selling you and your products. A Milton Cox, what I'm trying to convince a homeowner to sell me their house. Uh, Milton Cox, super chat this up. I'm serious. I want $50 for this. You're trying to get a someone who owns their house outright to sell you their house, correct? I'm going to wait until you answer. 
glass door. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Sales is very much a relationship business. It's not a transactional business. It's very much a relationship business. You're going to find more out about this person on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and possibly Snapchat than you ever will from Glassdoor. Jamar, I'm from Akron, Ohio. It's a mixture of both types of people here. Johnny Wong, what's polarizing? Trump. If you have a meeting with someone who voted for Trump and you talk about you hate Trump, you just kiss that goodbye. You just wasted your time driving over there. They will not ever do business with you. Uh, Christian Amerson. One of the toughest things for me as a personal trainer is people have to come to us in order to get sales. However, you're making me rethink policy. Maybe I should go to them sometimes. Christian Amerson. Uh, you've heard of Orange Theory. They do pop-up events. They actually go out to people to get people clients. They, they, they do them all over town. T. Leo Osborne, hi Glenn, and as an insurance agent in Atlanta, how do I pitch to I pitch my products? You find people who need your services. You you got to have a target audience. You got to know how to find them. You got to know how to reach them. Bryant, do you know of such a product that exists and works like a holding company? Um, no. You're gonna have to rewatch the replay. There's audio. There's clearly audio. GT Lovely, how can they get a payment plan for Hustlers LLC? Um, you can't. Let, let's talk about this. If you guys went around your house and was serious, you can get the money for the Hustlers LLC with the 50% discount. One of the reasons that I'm being this way is I want to teach you how to sell. I want to make sure that you're committed to the process. I do payment plans and stuff. A lot of people just phase out after like two or three. And then after like three months, it's like, hey, I want my money back because I ain't getting the full course. Let me do this. I don't even know how much money I got on me. I think I, oh, all right. So I want you to think of this here as plentiful as oxygen. Because it is. What do I have here? I got 20, 40, 1, 2, 3, 400. And always keep some money on you. It'll make you feel rich. I'm serious. Always keep money on you. At least 500 bucks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1140 bucks on me. This is what I'm just walking around with. Now, if you listen to me, you keep some money on you, you stack up the five business accounts, and you keep a lot of space on your credit card, you will start to have money come to you. Most of you spend all your money as soon as you get it, and that's why you don't have any. Uh, I'm doing something very different. I am making you be accountable. I'm making you be very accountable because if you're accountable, you work for it, you're actually going to do it. If I make it easy for you, which I've done, I actually gave these courses away with the false expectation that people would open them up and actually do the work and then they would buy my more expensive products. <laughs> I was silly as fuck. 95% of the people didn't even crack those courses over. So we, we, we done with that. Anyone comes at me like that, no more payment plans, no more extending anything. It's like, if you're listening to me and executing, there ain't a course that I have except for the hustle, the hustle camp, which is like 6,900. There ain't a course I have that you shouldn't be able to afford after a few weeks of hustling. So uh, there's that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. AJJ Poole, you better be vanilla as hell on sales calls. There's no place for your religion, politics, or thoughts of Kanye. Fix their problem, get paid for it, ask referrals. That's it. That's where you need to be. You're going to be asexual on the phone. You ain't even a man. You ain't a woman. You just 
a blend of powerful sales machine. Uh, Anthony Johnson, when you sell something that's actually beneficial to the customer, then you won't feel like you're selling. People's problem is they don't believe in their product or service that they're selling. Actually, that you just made one of the points I was going to make. Sell something you care about. I could sell a hell out of a BMW. I drive one. I could sell a hell out of an Audi. I drive one. I could sell a hell out of these Macs. I use them. I could sell a hell out of this Zoom thing. I could sell a hell out of this Sony camera. That's a big point because one of the things, um, let's, let me go through this because I don't want to wander too far off track. Know your products inside and out and know all of your competitors' products and flaws. This will require you to actually purchase them. When you actually can come at them with an esoteric angle of why your product is better and maybe their product is better, maybe you need to go sell their product. It's going to impress the customer. It just is. So to, um, let's see, where is it? To Anthony Johnson's point. Sell something that you actually care about. Don't just sell something because, man, the commission plan is awesome. But it's some bullshit. You ain't going to really make any money. Pretty much, Archangel. Uh, Robbie Rob, after taking the Fat Cat Secrets 5 to 25K course off taxes, I see the benefits of having the YouTube. When I start a channel, should I put a lot of time into it? Robbie Rob, great question. In a month or so, I'm going to be uh, doing what I did to disruptive mail to digital citizens. So just hold off on that, and I'll get into that. But essentially, you can just start the channel, put it in an LLC, and do one video a week, and it works. Um, once again... Um, I think fully like the I'm talking about the cream jobs, like maybe a 35K job, a 40K job or they or someone in your friend circle that they can actually talk about and get references on you. Maybe. Jamar Moore, once you uh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It just jumped. Jamar Moore, once you change how you look at money, it gravitates towards you. You got to think about holding on to money. You got to think about, there's this computer that I'm going to get. And I don't have it written down, but I wrote down a sales challenge to get that computer versus just putting it on my credit card or pulling money out the bank. My goal is to earn more money on top. Oh, wait a minute. That kind of looks like, oh my God. It looks like the $10,000 sales challenge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Learning how to sell big ticket. Oh, my God. I'm actually doing what I'm teaching y'all how to do. Every time I want something, I figure out a way to sell enough stuff to get it on top of my money. Because I don't like spending my money. <laughs> uh, let's see. Take it from me. G's course is a way worth the small fee. You want a payment plan? Hustle your purchase. Yeah, because uh, Robbie Rob, he he got, you can go check out the price. He bought the Hustlers LLC yesterday or the day before. Milton Cox, yes, I buy real estate, and sometimes it means talking to lots of homeowners, building report to build relationships. How can I become better at it? How many people are you talking to per month, Milton Cox? Thank you, Lamote. Caddy Williams, I love that video. You're speaking about five business accounts. I set my business accounts last long weekend. Thanks again for the insight. Sure thing. Dang, Agent J. Poole, he hit me. He 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 pulled he pulled my my he pulled my G card. I was gonna tell you however people how many people you're talking to, triple it. If you're talking to five people a month, you want to talk to fifteen to twenty. That's how you're gonna get better at it. Actually doing it. Agent J. Pool in the house. <laughs> uh, 
Purpose Pit, advice for authors investing, trying to get them Amazon reviews. Write more books. That's the best thing you can do. Write more books. Fred Ever, yes, those five business accounts completely changed my trading cash flow. True, Jamar. Uh, T. Leah Osborne, as an independent insurance agent, is Facebook and Instagram business. No. No. When you when people go for insurance, they go straight to the internet. They don't go to Facebook. No. <laughs> no. Lamo, I wear all my clothing that I sell. I believe in my clothing. Do that. There you go. Erica Nicole. This lead I've been working on for five months came through at 7K. Three days works in two weeks. I don't think I should never count. I don't think that should count. I've been working on it forever. I mean, that's up to you, you know. Thanks, Randall, for the super chat. Super chat it up. Super chat it up. We're about to get into some more stuff. All right. So, be honest. This is another thing. When you're presenting people, now, your first meeting may be informational. They're, they're just not going to make a decision, but you should try to close them in some version or fashion. Like, you know, if you're selling like a million dollars worth of office furniture, you're not going to walk out with a million dollar check. Uh, typically, they're going to have to go to their finance department. You're going to have to get a purchase order and all that other stuff, and that's going to take a little time. But if you're doing... Uh, let's say you're selling insurance. You should try to close that deal three to four times. This is where most salesmen suck ass. They try to close once the customer says no, and they're gone. <laughs> People are very, very peculiar with this stuff. So let's say, We'll take Leah. You're trying to close some insurance. And it's like, ah, I want to shop around. What would be your rebuttal? My rebuttal would be, Mr. Customer, I'm here right now. What do I need to do to get your business? We can move some numbers around. You do not want to leave without giving it three to four shots. Because typically, if you start taking more shots, you're going to hit more points. Yeah, I mean, you just got to write books because, like, let me show you something. And this is what I think of reviews. Uh, all right, so I'm going to show you my book, right? And it has 22 customer reviews, right? I've sold 25,000 copies of that book. I only got 22 reviews. Uh, this is where most authors go wrong, and it fits right into the sales theme. Most authors don't know how to sell their work. When you write a book, you need to have a YouTube channel. You need to be tweeting about it. You need to be reading current headlines, tie the headlines into your tweets about your book. You need to be working your ass off. Writing a book is very, very hard. Promoting a book is 10 times harder. You got to get out there, man. You got to shake those trees. Let's pull back. Uh, Agent J. Pool, I want to shop around as a stall. Probably comes down to price terms or something like that. Their brother sells it. Flush the objection and get to the real reason and close. Yeah. Like the other day when I was talking about Lawrence on the plane with this chick who didn't like him. He did not fucking give up. And this chick gave him her number, and she really didn't like him. Her body language is all this, all this other stuff. And next thing you know, I mean, if he had put a, sal a, a, a saucer of milk in his lap, she probably would have licked it out. Uh, D. Hector, years ago, I got a yard sale book following the steps in it. I made $1,100 my first day selling $1 to $10 items. Anyone doing the 10 k Callan should get it. I had 4,000 square feet with dollar stuff in it. 
Because, see, people, when they buy, when your stuff is that cheap, they usually buy more than one. So this person rocks out with $30, $40, $50 worth of stuff because it's so cheap. Pretty much, Chris, Purpose Pit YouTube channel. <laughs> Purpose Pit, what about book tours? Waste of money. All right. Uh, Rob, I would not use Instagram to promote your painting business. I wouldn't even use YouTube to promote your painting business. Painting is a service that when people need it, where do they go? They go to Craigslist. They go to the Internet. They don't go to YouTube. They don't go to Instagram. I wouldn't use those. All right. So let's see. Where are we with this? All right. This kind of like present more. If you suck ass in sales, you need to stack your 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 present presentation list as fat as full as possible. When you get in front of someone for the first few times, you're going to be nervous. But the only way to combat that is to present every day, to role play with your roommate, your girl, whoever, your, even your neighbor, and just work on that and work on that. And once again, most salespeople don't do this. Top salespeople do. Most salespeople just go in. Let's see. I'm going to actually find that stat. Dwayne Bryan, appreciate it. Coach G is a small token of my appreciation and the info I learned and utilized to get my credit card amounts raised. Take take O'Shea to the bar pimping and you and the gurus throw a few back. Appreciate you. That's super chat. 20 bucks. All right, so how many times does, does the average salesperson close all right oh okay this is 2017 let's go over this together uh let's see where is it now this is uh do you find prospecting, which is one of the most profitable activities you can do, a difficult part of your job? You're not alone. More than 40% of salespeople say this is the most challenging part of the sales process, followed by closing and qualifying. Uh, there's a number, there's a relationship between the number of opportunities in your pipeline each month and quota attainment. 72% of companies with less than 50 new ops per month didn't achieve their revenue goals compared to 15% with 15 to 100 new ops and just 4% of companies with 101 to 200 new ops. And those are leads. Devote time to prospecting each and every day. You should be prospecting just as much on the first day of the month or quarter as the last. Going down, Gong's data uh, sales science team analyzed 15 months of data and found average salespeople made far more calls in the last month of the quarter. Is that you? Almost six in 10 buyers want to discuss pricing on the first call. More than half the prospects want to be know how the product works on the first call. Buyers are less concerned with the qualifying topics salespeople are usually most interested in. Just in one in four wants to discuss budget, authority, and timeline. 19% uh, of buyers want to connect with the salespeople, meaning they're ready to buy. It takes an average of 18 calls to actually connect with a buyer. It takes an average of 18 calls to connect with a buyer. Only 24% of sales emails are opened. Nine and nine and ten companies use two or more lead enrichment tools. Now check this out. An analysis of more than twenty two hundred American companies found that those who attempted 
to reach leads within an hour were nearly seven times likely to have a meaningful conversation with decision makers than those who waited an even 60 minutes. The average person deletes 48% of the emails they get. The vast majority of prospects want to read emails at 5 and 6 a.m. The vast majority of prospects want to read emails at 5 and 6 a.m. Let's come out of that. Now, that went right with what I told you about, even before I got there, to making those phone calls. If you want to catch whales, you got to go fishing early. Like real early. You may have to even change your sleep schedule. Yeah, because Robbie, you will be more successful door knocking than doing that. Thanks for the super chat, Lamote. Five bucks. Love it. All right. So let's go to some more mind blowing stuff. Uh, let's see. All right, let's go here. All about sales because we're trying to get to this $10,000 challenge in 25 days, 22 days to go. Go below if you need help. Get the Never Broke Action Pack. If you really want to enhance your game, go ahead and get the Hustlers LLC. All right. Let's see if they've got what I'm looking for. 92% of all customer interactions happen over the phone. It takes an average of eight cold, eight cold call attempts to reach a prospect. Let's talk about that. Typically, what this is what most companies do. They hire people who work between 8.30 and 5.30. They're missing two. They're actually missing four hours of prime time calling. What I used to do, and I still had to go in the office, but I would call people from home before I went to work. I would wake up and I would start calling at five o'clock. I got most of my appointments at home, went to work, kind of faked the funk a little bit. Then I started calling again, like 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30. That's why I was able to book so many appointments. I didn't call them because, all right, I got to work on this job. I called them when they were actually picking up the phone. If you get up early and start making phone calls and reaching out to people and sending emails, you're going to get a lot more responses than the middle of the day. Uh, the best time to cold call is between 4 and 5 p.m. That's one of the best times. The other time is early in the morning. 30 to 50 percent of sales go to the vendor that responds first, i.e. Craigslist. Someone emails you about an item. If you get right back to them, your percentage of closing that sale is like 90%. If you wait next to the next day, you may never hear from them again. 80% of sales require five follow-up calls after the meeting. 44% of sales reps give up after one follow-up. That's one of the stats I wanted. That's what I was looking for. 44% give up after one follow-up, but it takes five follow-up calls. Uh, I'm going to disagree with this. Thursday, the best day to prospect. Wednesday's the second best day. Um, once again, if you adjust your times, you can win Monday through Friday. I know why they're saying that because typically people are bombarded with all kinds of stuff on Monday. Monday's the beginning of the week. A lot of people don't want to be at work. So I, I can see that. Nearly 13% of all the jobs in the U.S., one in eight are full time sales positions. Over a trillion dollars are spent annually on sales forces. In a typical firm with 100 to 500 employees, an average of seven people are involved in most buying decisions. And essentially, you got to make all of those motherfuckers like you. <laughs> or you ain't getting the deal. 78% of salespeople use social media to outsell their, pe their peers. Uh, Takeaway, if done right, social media selling really works. 
they didn't really break down exactly what you're doing. This is interesting. Email is almost 40 times better at acquiring new customers than Facebook and Twitter. And email is dying. And it's still 40 times more be better. 12. And this is what the point I was going to get to. After you close the sale, you should always ask for two referrals. Always. Salespeople who actively seek out and exploit referrals earn four to five times more than those who don't. So if you're making 50, you're going to make 200K by asking for referrals. 200K to 250K. A lot of salespeople are lazy. 91% of customers say they give referrals. Only 11% of salespeople ask for referrals. Only 13% of customers believe a salesperson can understand their needs. 55% of the people making their living in sales don't have the right skills to be successful. Ain't that the truth? It's more like 75%. Continuous training gives 50% higher net sales per employee. The average company spends 10 to 15K higher than an individual and only 25K a year in sales training. They're doing it wrong. It takes 10 months or more for a new sales rep to be fully productive. And this is why when you start a new business and as much as you want to quit your job, you can't because of that. It's going to take you a lot of time to become good and proficient unless you do what I did, which was work literally 16 hours a day for three months. True story. Woman, Brian, Coach G, 530 in New York. That shit is unheard of. Really? I'm going to tell you a story. I made a call to a guy in New York at 4.30 in the morning, and that motherfucker answered. <laughs> New York is a hard-to-get-around city. The people who got shit to do go to work early. Pretty much. Uh, just just go ahead. Once you start selling and knocking on doors, your rhythm is going to emerge. You, you got to get into it. Tech, tech, technology. Name something more expensive than laziness. That's a good quote. Robbie Rob, that's a whole lot of dog food. Yes, it is. A new back, a new background. Nice. You you have not been around for a long time. Okay, so just to get you guys in the sales mind and let you know why it's going to be so hard to find a premium sales job. To get a job like I got at Rent a Crate today would probably pay base sixty to seventy, uh, five percent commission, and I couldn't get that job the way I got the job at Rent a Crate. That door is closed. Pretty much. So what I want you guys to do is watch this video three times. Because each time you watch, you're going to get more and more stuff out of it. And for those of you who need help, go below. Use the coupon. It's all below. And get the courses that you need. Um, since we're doing this $25,000 sales challenge in 25 days, I'm offering sales courses. Who would have thought it? Uh, the, lo the cheapest one is the 30 days to 2500 package. So that will do a lot for you and seriously can help you exceed your goal. All right. So go ahead, throw in these last minute super chats. And if you have any more sales questions, hit me up. Because I'm going to tell you something. And if you're serious, the tip to wake your ass up early and start calling could literally put 100K in your pocket. If you got a serious sales gig, um, most people don't do this. Most salespeople get hired. They get like a week of product knowledge. They don't get taught how to sell. And this is why they fail. And this is why people hate sales. Uh, X Mo X. 
here's the way for you to get a sales job. If you got the heart for it and you have the financial ability, go to a company and say, look, I want a job here. Research the company. Make sure you want the job. And I am willing to work for 90 days for free. No base salary, but I do want commissions on what I sell. And some place is going to turn you down immediately, but someone may give you, someone will give you a shot. Make the best of it. That's how you can get these one these these jobs. Cuz no one does that. Everybody wants to be paid paid while they're taking vacation, while they're taking long ass breaks and shit. They don't want to do any work. So if you come in there and I guarantee you, if you are actually making sales, the owner is going to be like, damn, hey, come here. Uh, we're going to put you on salary and we're going to put you on regular commission. That's how you open those doors that seem to be unopened. <laughs> you know, you can't get in and be fancy when you have no experience. That's just ludicrous. All right. No more questions. All right. For those of you who cast replay. You can still super chat it. The link's below. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Actually, let me hold up. I will not see you at Disruptive Mail. Uh, Disruptive Mail is Sunday through Thursday. I think that's the schedule I'm going to keep. And I will be doing something here tomorrow. Probably a little earlier. Benny M thoughts on Grant Cardone. You know, Grant Cardone was going broke when he started his YouTube channel. I want you to listen to me. Grant Cardone sells like a hundred million dollars a year worth of his sales programs. And he takes that money and he puts it into real estate. A hundred million a year. I'm, I'm going to be straight up. If I make a hundred million in my lifetime, because right now I'm up to twelve, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be, I don't, I'm gonna be like thrilled as shit. <laughs> Just to let you know, Grant is an absolute fucking beast, and a lot of people hate on him because he's an arrogant little fucker, but he gets fucking results. All right, Diane Thompson, thank you for the super chat. Y'all be sure to get some courses and super chat up in the replay. I'll see you guys tomorrow with uh, some more sales training. How about that? Catch me outside. <laughs>